So let us pray. St Ambrose Catholic School community in Concord West, together with Catholic cemeteries and crematoria, welcome you all here this morning for our stations of the passionate and faith-filled. We are blessed to be able to join, perhaps in this wet, but nevertheless beautiful and peaceful setting. An invitation to each of you that as we travel in prayer along the waterways, you're invited to dedicate each station to a loved one, perhaps to an event or a situation that is dear to your heart. Keep your heart close in your hand as you journey. As we gather together to pray today, we acknowledge and respect the spiritual relationship the Aboriginal people have with this country. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, the Wongal people of the Darug Nation, and the ongoing importance of their culture and beliefs to our lives. With open hearts, we pay our respects to elders, both past, both past and present, and we commit ourselves to actively work alongside Indigenous people for reconciliation and justice. May we walk gently on this land. The artwork at the cover of your booklet was created by Anne Gray. Forgive them, Father, for that they know not what they do. In Anne's reflection, she said, it has struck me recently how absolutely horrible the crucifixion was. I wanted to convey this by my use of color and texture. I wanted Jesus to emerge from the darkness and be somewhat out of focus as if he hovers between the states of being crucified and then being taken down from the cross. Despite the horror, I hope Jesus has a softness about him because we are being asked to hear the voice of forgiveness that Jesus proclaimed while he was being crucified. The spirit of mercy is all the more incredible when contrasted with the intensity and bleakness of his death. Let us move to station one. Jesus is condemned to death. Judge and condemn. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. You are invited to offer this station to a loved one, place, event, or situation. But Jesus remains silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? 
I am, said Jesus. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest torn his cloth. Why do you need any more witness? He asked. You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. Norma's Reflection The circle at the top of my artwork represents Jesus, placed above us all. It represents original perfection. In the words of Hermes Tregmetis, God is a circle whose centre is everywhere and whose circumference is nowhere. The circle, Jesus, bleeds on humanity below. Help us, Jesus, to be grateful for the sacrifices you made for us. Help us pray for those who have hurt us. In your death, Jesus, you freed us from sin. We are nothing without you. Help us, dear Jesus, to be more like you, to love like you, to help others as you did, and to do so humbly as we follow your perfect way. Let us pray. Have mercy on us. Second station, Jesus carries his cross. Jesus accepts his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. I invite you to dedicate this station to a loved one. I would like to dedicate this station to Oresto Pecedi, who needs strength, at this time, but who has received his cross and is ready for the fight. And Pilate said to the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him. Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. And so they took Jesus away and led him away, bearing the cross for himself. Jesus walks alone carrying the burden of his shoulders accepting his cross and his destiny. As we all walk through life carrying our burden, our own crosses, there are good days when we can barely feel it, but there are days when we feel that weight is too heavy. Days when we feel we can't carry it all by ourselves. The past couple of years have seen a solo place for many of us, a burden too heavy to be carried for some. How often do we stop to notice the ones who struggle? How often do we forget about our own burdens and try to lift the weight of others? Jesus knew it wouldn't be easy, but he accepted it and carried it just the same. Rays of light reveal his divine nature as the Holy Spirit flutters above him. 
Do you see his symbol? Jesus is wearing purple, the Roman colour of royalty, as he is our king, our saviour. Jesus doesn't walk through past environments as his presence is timeless. The stained glass window, beh the stained glass window behind him represents the church, the place where we forever reside the place where we always find him. Recognise the colours of the Ukrainian present in the artwork, a burden being carried by these people. Let us pray. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Station. Jesus falls the first time. The cross I bear. We adore, we adore you, O Christ, Christ, and we, we praise, praise you, because, because by your holy, holy cross you, you have redeemed, redeemed the world. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before you. If you were of the world, the world would love what is, is its own. Because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. Remember the word that I have spoken to you. No servant is greater than his master. If you have persecuted me, they will persecute you also. Walking in the dark towards the light, dusty path, dense cross, the journey, alone, throbbing head, blood drips, pain burdens, fallen, exhausted. He rises to continue towards his light for his people. I sat in the dark of the night and spoke to a wise man who was hours from his last breath, a man who I admired for so many reasons and I asked him, why? Why is this happening to our family? He paused and replied, God only gives us the cross that we can carry. We walk along the path, sometimes guided, sometimes side by side, but the journey at the end is done alone. Your head takes you to memories and to what you will leave behind. You feel tired from the fight until there is no more to fight. You rise and walk towards the light for your faith is what sees you through. A tear rolled down his face. His eyes closed and part of me did too. Let us pray. Holy God, holy and mighty, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. station. 
purpose in suffering. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because, because by your holy cross you have redeemed, redeemed the world. I invite you to dedicate this station to a loved one or event. I dedicate this station to both my brothers who suffer from cancer. that they might have the strength to carry it through the end with faith. Now there were standing by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sister, Mary of Cleophas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciples, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciples took her into his home. Mary would have experienced immense pain when seeing her son in so much agony. As she journeyed along with him, she saw his wounded, bleeding body from the scourging. Jesus was burdened by the heavy cross depicted in this painting, which so many can relate to at certain points in their life, when feeling sorrow, sorrow or turmoil. Mary, seeing her beloved son suffer, would have wanted to go forward and help him, just as she would have when he was a child. Mary's overwhelming loving faith, together with her constant yes to God, demonstrates she understood that the cross was to fulfill God's purpose. She knew the purpose of his suffering. His pain wasn't for nothing. It was for everything, for our eternal life and salvation. It is always difficult to see the purpose of our suffering while we are in it or when we see others suffer because with perseverance and trust we can make our suffering more like Christ's. We can choose to pick up our personal cross and keep moving, moving forward one step at a time. Like Mary, we can choose to suffer in love instead of suffering in bitterness. We can walk beside those who are suffering with compassion instead of anger. Let us pray. Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus to carry his cross. Meeting Place by Bronte Ayub and Sinead Kent. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. I invite you to dedicate this station to a loved one or event. And when they had mocked Jesus, they took the purple cloak off and put his own clothes on him. And they led him out to be crucified. Then they forced a certain passerby, Simon of Cyrene, coming from the country to take up his cross. 
they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, a name meaning the place of the skull. Bronte and Sinead's Reflection. The title of the fifth station from Our Lady of Mount Carmel School, OLMC Waterloo, is the meeting place. Simon and Jesus came together at this point on the way of the cross. It was a meeting place of two humans, humanity and divinity. A meeting place like so many meeting places where help is offered and received. This is not an ordinary meeting place, but for our community at OLMC, its significance is authentic, lived daily, and truly understood by all who choose the Mount Carmel Way. The colors used represent the red land of Australia. The colors of the Aboriginal flag are represented in the black of the cross, the red of the earth, and blood of Jesus Christ. And if you look closely, you can see the yellow color of the radiating sun. These colors also represent the hardship and trauma suffered by the Aboriginal people in the past and the current hardship, turmoil, and uncertainty for Waterloo's multicultural community today. We acknowledge that we all carry our own crosses with Jesus by our side. The hint of yellow, if you look closely, from our Christian perspective, represents the hope of Easter and the sun that bakes our great nation. The Aboriginal symbols represent meeting places, people and people gathering. The cross of Christ is a meeting place between humans, a place where divinity and humanity come together, a place where the ancient and the modern can share their story. The single U-shape represents the individual staff and each of their Aboriginal students at OLMC Waterloo. The people gathering and the six U-shapes around the outside circle are the leadership team who lead OLMC, who guide and protect the staff at Waterloo. There is no need for faces. We do not need to know the names. Each of us is connected. And where we see a hand reaching out as Simon reached out to Jesus, God too reaches into the messiness of our lives, our situations, our needs, our traumas, our sadness. And we must also remember, as resurrection people, Jesus also reaches into our joy, hope, and celebrations. In our lives, we can all be like Simon, asked to do something unexpectedly that we really don't want to do. In our community, we all face challenging moments that take us outside of our comfort zones, actions, conversations, encounters. God said to Catherine of Siena, I could well have supplied each of you with all your needs, both spiritually and material, but I wanted to make you dependent on one another, that each of you would be my minister, dispensing the graces and gifts you have received from me. In Jesus, we see God needing us, needing help with carrying his cross. It's okay to be needy. Let us pray. Holy God, God holy, holy and mighty, holy, holy immortal, immortal one, one, have mercy, have mercy on, on us. On us. Station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. Compassion. We adore, we adore you, you, O Christ, Christ and, and we praise, praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. the world. I invite you to dedicate.
station to a loved one. I'd like to dedicate this station to all the suffering people of the Ukraine. Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And answering, the king will say to them, Amen, I say to you, as long as you did it for one of these, the least of my brethren, you did it for me. A modern, simple, uncluttered work that highlights the symbolism of this significant moment in Christ's journey to Calvary. Veronica's miraculous gift of Jesus' face upon her veil is there for all time. Veronica epitomizes compassion, her simple yet profound act of love for the suffering Jesus is at the centre of Annie's work. Her actions were selfless and courageous. Veronica herself exemplifies the true image of God. The true image of God is the actions we take for one another. The colours chosen are essentially symbolic and attempt to speak of the need for selfless love and compassion for the suffering of others. The pinks of various shades represent Veronica's femininity, sensitivity, intuition and tenderness. The depth of sadness and an element of remembrance that is the cross is emphasised by using violet tones. The white within the depiction of Christ represents the presence of the Holy Spirit. The black background flecked with blue exhibits the darkness that surrounded Christ's journey. The cruelty he endured and the resultant mood of the time. The blue flecks represent the loyalty and light of his followers, despite the suffering they witnessed. Christ's face, while blurred, is clearly imprinted upon Veronica's veil, a stark reminder that the face of Christ is ever present, should we wish to look for it in others. Mary's tilted head and downward eyes represent her humbleness. She does not seek affirmation nor attention for her courageous show of care and compassion for the suffering Jesus. Let us pray. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Seventh station, Jesus falls for the second time. Strength. We, we adore you, O Christ, 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 and we, we praise you, because, because by, by your, your holy cross, cross you have redeemed, redeemed the, world. the world. You are invited to dedicate this station to a loved one or event. I want to dedicate this one to God and Sophia and Lorena, and I have to pray and pray. It was our weakness that he carried, our sufferings that he endured. While we thought of him as stricken, as one struck by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the punishment that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We had gone all, all gone astray like sheep, 
each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Just as our Lord Jesus carried the weight of our cross, so do we. It is with the Holy Spirit in which we are enlightened in our minds and hearts to have the courage to keep going. Our artwork, that of Francesca and Janine, depicts the torture that our Lord Jesus endured as he crashes to the ground, even with the help of Simon. It is through the expressions of the faces painted that they reflect and understand the hope, courage and unconditional love for God, his Father. This allows Jesus to find the strength to rise, carry on and continue in order to fulfil his Father's will. It is through this station that we reflect on struggles and sins which cause us to fall and rise again all of which allow us to experience growth in ourselves and each other. The station gives us great strength. What struggle or sin causes you to fall? Think about how your sins added to the weight of Jesus' cross. What habitual sins do you have in your life? And how are you actively working to overcome them? Do you pray for strength and guidance or do you try to go it alone? Are you making progress? What can you do differently if there is little or no improvement? Let us pray. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on upon us. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem, weeping for change. We adore, we adore you, O Christ, Christ, and we praise you, you because, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. I invite you to dedicate this station to a loved one or event. I dedicate this station to my auntie's great-granddaughter, May she rest in peace. There was following Jesus a great crowd of people, and among them were some women who were wailing and lamenting him. Jesus turning to them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Jesus turning to them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Jesus makes sense when we think about the historical suffering of humanity, women, children, boys, girls, young men and women. We are all children. Jesus recognises the great need for us to turn to those most vulnerable in our society. Rebecca's drawing depicts stages of a child who represents all of us. The child is set amongst the historical atrocities that continue to destroy humans and their relationships with one another. Jesus warns, that there is more suffering to endure. If we are without true responsibility for our actions, 
then we are not willing to change, but to simply carry on as usual. Let us pray. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. station Jesus falls a third time perseverance we adore you O Christ and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world I invite you to dedicate this station to a loved one or event I lie sprawled in the dust. Give me life according to your word. I declared my ways and you answered me. Teach me your commands. Make me understand the way of your precepts and I will meditate on your wondrous deeds. My soul weeps because of grief. Strengthen me with your words. The ninth station of the cross is Jesus falls a third time. Jesus is knocked down for the third and final time. The crowd believes he won't be able to stand up again because his energy is nearly depleted and the weight of the cross is crushing him. Jesus' action at station nine serves as a reminder that we need to continue to persevere and push through the difficult times. Over a year ago, who knew it would have been the last time we would see our friends in person or to be able to high five each other in the hallway or hold each other closely and bring comfort when we were down. We have been through a lot in the past year but with God's help and love, we continue to push through and make it so we could see our friends again in person. We need to remember that no matter what happens, we need to look towards a positive future and trust in God. Let us pray. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Station. Jesus is stripped of his clothes, exposed and vulnerable. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. They gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink. 
Then after they had crucified him, they divided his clothes, casting lots to fulfill what would have spoken through the prophet. They divided my clothes among them, and upon my garments they cast lots. When Jenny reflected on this scripture, she was struck by a wave of sensations, being stripped, exposed, vulnerable, traumatized, humbled. The inevitability of Jesus facing his stripping and what was to come. Jenny felt that the scriptures seemed to gloss over the personal and intimate humiliation of Jesus the man, having his clothes removed. This led Jenny to think about modern day circumstances where a person embarks on a journey not of their choosing and circumstances where the world sees more than anyone would want to expose. Jenny has been on what she calls the cancer nightmare, not journey, as she sees a journey as something pleasant. It was not something she chose it was chosen for her. Since her breast cancer diagnosis, she has felt exposed physically and emotionally, vulnerable to cancer and having to be totally reliant on doctors and nurses, traumatized by mental anguish, ongoing worry about her mortality, along the, with the intensity of treatment. She has felt humbled by the support, love and care of her family, friends, colleagues, medical staff, fellow cancer patients and the odd perfect stranger. Jesus was no more exempt from the trauma of what was happening to him than she or anyone else that has experienced such a nightmare. Jenny finishes saying, while much of what she has written has come across as dark, she really wanted this painting to show that the stripping of Jesus was not the end of the matter, but rather something he had to endure for a hopeful future. And in a similar way, cancer treatment is also something to be endured. If we take each day as it comes and welcome each moment, as a means to a way forward, even things that are unpleasant, such as treatments, can easily be accepted and strangely, at least in her case, welcomed as they provide hope. Finally, it is a reminder that the gift of Christ's sacrifice on the cross renewed life, and this is something to be cherried, cherished. Let us pray. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. station Jesus is nailed to the cross sacrifice we adore you O Christ and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world I invite you to dedicate this station to a loved one or event I dedicate this uh, station to my mother who needs help physically emotionally and spiritually I hope she'll be all right. When they came to Golgotha, the place called the Scar, they crucified Jesus and the robbers. 
one on his right and the other on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they, don't know, they do not know what they are doing. As Jody was painting this artwork, she was thinking of Jesus making the ultimate sacrifice of his life. Out of his love for us and the potential for goodness, he saw in all of humankind. Jody was also thinking of the strength Jesus showed as he unflinchingly faced the trials of his journey to his crucifixion. We too should aspire to follow in his footsteps of bravery and strength of character. Let us pray. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. station Jesus dies on the cross death and salvation we adore you O Christ and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world I invite you to dedicate this station to a loved one or event I dedicate this station to my many aunties and uncles who now travel in paradise. I thank them for the joy and love that they brought into our lives. It was now about the sixth hour. There was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the curtains of the temple was torn into the mid in the middle. Jesus cried out with a loud voice and said, It is finished. Father, into your hands I condemned your spirit, command your spirit. Then bowing his head, and he died. The artwork depicts that final moment when Jesus takes his last breath and dies on the cross. In the present hour of our history, we are living in God's darkness. We know that as Jesus hung on the cross, he forgave the soldiers who had crucified him. He also prayed for his mother and friends Jesus wanted us to be able to live forever with God, so he gave all he had for us. This painting, Giovanna invites the viewer to think about Jesus' suffering. For after three hours of agony on that cross, Jesus is finally overwhelmed with suffering and abandoning himself to the weight of his own body, he bows his head and he dies. Giovanna hopes that her artwork depicts this anguish through the darkness and obscurity of his face and by the ominous blue and black shades of the tempestuous skies. Let us pray. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us.
Station, Jesus dies on the cross. Death and salvation. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. I invite you to dedicate this station to a loved one. It's okay. When the soldiers came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, so that they did not break his legs. But one of them opened his side with a lance, and immediately there came out blood and water. Joseph of Arimathea, because he was a disciple of Jesus, although a secret one of, for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. Taken down off the cross and laid in a mother's arms, how hard would it be to witness your son, your child humiliated, tortured, and then violently nailed to a cross in a public forum for all to watch and gloat heartlessly until he succumbed, exhausted, and in pain to death. Even worse would be the hopelessness of that situation as a mother not to be able to be his mum to protect him, save him, remove him and take away all that pain. Lucy, as a mother of three boys, she knows that her heart would be broken, shattered into pieces, just as this painting is. Let us pray. Holy God, holy and mighty, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. Jesus is laid in the tomb. Unless the grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. We adore you, O Christ, and, and we, we praise, praise you, because, because by, by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. world. I invite you to dedicate this last station to a loved one or event. I dedicate this station for the complete healing of my dad and for my own family overseas. Joseph of Arimathea took the body of Jesus and wrapping it in a clean linen cloth, he laid it in his new tomb which he had honed out of rock. Then he rolled a large stone against the entrance of the tomb and departed. O buried Jesus, I kiss the stone that encloses you, but you rose again the third day. I beg you by your resurrection Make me rise glorious with you on the last day, to be always united with you in heaven, to praise and love you forever. Words by Saint Alphonsus Liguri. I could not imagine more beautiful words than these written here, for it is his words that inspired this painting. Let us pray. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, 
have mercy upon us. Amen. name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.